Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is machine connectivity in Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So naturally, Power Automate needs a connectivity agent in order to traverse the cloud to ground, cloud to data center, cloud to device scenarios. And historically, we've been able to achieve this using the on-premises data gateway, same one that you would use for Power BI or for Power Apps, Cloudflows, and, and Logic Apps, etc. Now, naturally, for some organizations that had larger footprints of Power Automate Desktop and RPA, managing a lot of gateways becomes a challenge and it introduces some friction to, in order to govern that. Uh, part of it is just access. Part of it is just the perception of what does the gateway do. And then naturally managing two separate install packages also creates some challenges. So recently, Microsoft has introduced a new connectivity feature that has been added directly to Power Automate Desktop. And so this is any version of Power Automate Desktop, while well, it's currently the only version of 2.8 and newer, 2.8 and greater. And do note that this feature is in preview. Uh, so just be aware of that. And you can still take advantage of load distribution using something called machine groups. So in the on-premise data gateway scenario, we could essentially create clusters of our gateways. Um, a similar sort of capability is here using what's called machine groups, where you can go ahead and tie multiple machines together as a group and then have that load distribution go across that group in order to help scale. And I would say also optimize your licenses. So I have gone ahead and installed this. We're going to do a demo. We're going to walk through it, but organizations should be evaluating this feature. Um, it is in preview, so it may not be ready for your production scenarios just yet, depending upon your sort of policies internally, but you should definitely be using this in some of your non-prod workloads and getting an understanding of this connectivity and evaluate it because this is something that you're going to want to use in the future. There's no question about that. So you might be asking, okay, how do I go ahead and get this new machine connectivity bit that we're talking about? So you can go ahead and find the latest version of Power Automate Desktop from the Power Automate Maker Portal. So just head over there, click on My Flows, and then you should see this install dropdown, and then you can go ahead and download Power Automate Desktop. And from there, let's get into a demo and I can show you the rest of this all live. Okay, so I'm in Power Automate Desktop. Let's just go ahead and click About, right? So you can see the version of the software that I'm running it needs to be at least this. Uh, this was the first instance of the software that supports this new capability. Now, where we'll find our machine connectivity options is in Settings. So click on Settings, then click on Machine Preview. So what's going to happen the first time you go ahead and, and install this and click on the settings tab is it is going to try to connect automatically and connect and register your machine mm -hmm. based upon the environment that you do have actively configured. Naturally, you can go ahead and choose you know, which environment you do want to register the machine with, provide descriptions, etc. Now, one thing to note is that at this point in time, you can only have one instance tied to a specific environment. So in this case, I'm connected to dev. This would be a scenario where this machine is, is essentially processing my dev workloads. If I had uh, subsequent machines, I could go ahead and pin them to test, pin them to prod environments, and just know that they are sticky from that perspective. It will automatically detect the machine name. Naturally, if you have any sort of naming conventions, you can go ahead and change these values as well. Machine groups, we're not going to cover it in this particular video. I'll have an upcoming video where we'll do a live demo of what machine groups look like and how that load distribution does take place. But uh, for now, that's where you would be able to go ahead and add this to a specific machine group. It will take you over to the Power Automate portal where you can go ahead and manage it from there. So that's all that is required on the machine itself inside of Power Automate Desktop. Now what we'll do is we'll flip over to the cloud flows and look at the impact that we have from a configuration perspective. So now over in Power Automate Maker Portal, do note if I do expand the monitor tab, 
we do have now a machines options, right? So here's where we can go ahead and look at all of the machines that I have access to. We also have that machine groups tab where we can go ahead and register machine groups. And then naturally we have the existing gateways tab that was previously there. But let's go into what the design time implications are of using this particular feature. So what I'm gonna do is leverage that example I've used in the past that checks for Traeger grills. And let's go ahead and modify that specific scenario. Okay, so here we are, we're on our action for run a flow built with Power Automate Desktop. Doesn't look like a whole lot has changed here, but if we go ahead and create a new connection, that's where we're gonna go ahead and start to see some differences. So here what we can do is we can go ahead and choose, do we wanna use a gateway or do we wanna use directly to machine? From there, we can go ahead and select the machine that we have access to, naturally provide our credentials, much like we would using a gateway approach itself. So that's really all of the change that you do need to make. The rest of it will continue to work as, as it did previously. And so we can go ahead and run this specific flow and it will go ahead and call our desktop instance and we'll run sort of as we expect it to. There we go, and as you can see, we do have Traeger grills in stock in Canada if people are interested. Uh, and I've had actually quite a few people ask me about uh, if I have received my grill and the answer is yes, I have. I've used it many times and uh, really enjoying Traeger Grill. So if you're into barbecue, highly recommend Traeger. They're totally worth the money and uh, I've been really enjoying it. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, that's essentially the demo. Um, as I mentioned before, it is in preview, so do understand what that means. I wouldn't be you know, rushing to get your production workloads on, but definitely start to explore this feature. Start to think about your architecture and how you would want to go ahead and support this going forward. But what will be really nice is that you can manage your connectivity right with the desktop. There has been some situations in the past where you've had to have a certain level of gateway to match what was being used by the desktop software itself. And so this naturally is going to be embedded within it and it'll be one less thing for you to go ahead and manage. The other thing is, you know, gateways are something that organizations don't like to see a proliferation of. And so if you see like hundreds of thousands of gateways, it's going to make a lot of people nervous. Now, perception wise, it often comes down to, hey, this is just part of the software itself. And so probably less of a concern from that perspective in terms of the optics involving connectivity from the cloud service to the desktop agent itself. All right, so thanks for checking out this video. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Thanks for watching this on YouTube. Likes, subscribes, comments are always welcome. Please go ahead and take care of that. And we'll catch you next week on the channel. Take care and have a great day.